Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. I don't know. I, I, I really have no need for them and or want, but might. They're really cheap. I know, because you can't sell them anywhere <laughs> else. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I could sell them at Games Plus Auction, but I'm trying to get, you know... Money. Real, real money. money. Yeah. Yeah. It's... it's uh, Yeah, I mean, it's, they, they it, would actually probably go for a bit there, because, you know, that's the Grognard place right. to buy it at. Right. Yeah. That's what that's, they want. Yeah. They they want they want Japanese. I was I was talking with the guys and um they were they were talking about how like they're getting really fed up with like a lot of people bringing like BS to the auction to sell. Mm. Like it's getting to the point where they can't sell like real stuff because they're selling like really crappy foam terrain that's oh, not really right. Right. you know they're not selling product they're selling some dude's homemade garbage yeah they're selling essentially people's garbage like yeah they should probably disavow handmade items really i mean well that was the thing is like oh so last time i brought a dartboard right and i was like i know it's tangentially gaming related if you guys don't sell it did and if you guys don't want to sell it or don't put it up just let me know i'll take it i i just i thought maybe someone would take it mm -hmm. and they put it up because i guess actually someone did want to buy it so mm. that was that was fine i finally was able to get rid of it out of my house but i mean i i completely understand their point of view like mm. why would you put up like i guess like some guy brought like a bag full of like like bedding like that the the like foam bedding that you put in blankets and he's like it's smoke or it's snow and he's like no and they just put it in the garbage <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like but but the thing the sad thing is is that people do bid on crap like that which makes people give them even more impetus to put that garbage in yeah. you know I, I don't know i always i always feel bad for like the people who take the 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 the, the pebble foam from like computers that they open up like the the white pebble foam mm -hmm. that a computer's are packed in they're like it's an imperial fortress <laughs> <laughs> it's a fortress from my space marines <laughs> space marines space marines yeah and it's yeah. yeah i that's what i always i i just i look at that i'm like Ugh. yeah i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna talk to my brother-in-law and just ask him if he'd take games plus fucking store credit like i know he doesn't really want to but he'll be like hey would you take games plus because i could, bet i could get this stuff sold at games plus yeah because no one else is buying any of this i don't know why like i figured the i figured the 40k stuff would be a fucking slam dunk but apparently mm -hmm. the fantasy stuff is a slam dunk no i was just talking with a uh with a guy i'm doing a campaign with for a different game and we were talking and he was telling me and we were talking about selling 40k stuff it's like you can't sell it anymore it's like no one it's no one's buying yeah and i go mainly because it's cheap plastic crap like mm -hmm. you could you, it's not even like well, it's, it's a, reached the failure point yeah it's reached the point where like people are like wow that's a really good deal on those space marines but i don't have the money to complete that army like even though you're selling me this this chunk of the army at 50 percent off or 40 percent or 60 percent off or even 70 percent off i don't have the money to complete the rest of that army because of workshop pricing yeah and like even on ebay yeah i guess that could be a point i mean like you can't even like add any of like the big tanks because they're all 80 dollars right you know like what's or you have to have a Titan now, right. oh, or, you unless know. you're unless you're selling an actually complete army. Yeah, it's very difficult to sell stuff. Yeah, because I, I guess like nobody because infantry is cheap. Like you get infantry anywhere. Yeah, for next to nothing. They're all over the yeah. place. Unless it's something like you know like metal sisters I'm or sure. forge world stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure like this guy who was probably selling some of the 40k stuff. It's you know he's he's an older guy, so he probably has a lot of like metal rogue trader stuff that. Mm -hmm. That's more people are like, oh, this is my precious. Maybe we get some rogue trader. I'm going to have my whole rogue trader. And play Actually, I don't know. Me. I don't know if there's a lot of, I think a lot of those guys just don't play 40K anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could still, squats still go for a lot. <laughs> I look it up every once in a while just to confirm the fact that I could sell my squats and make a lot of money. You should up, probably sell them sooner never, rather than later. No, I don't care. I don't care if the price bottoms out on that. I'm not selling my squats. No. No, Steve. You've got a problem. I do have a problem. <laughs> I have a giant problem. Um, actually, actually, it's a small problem because they're squats. They're squats. They're tiny problem. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Game Classy. Uh, Game Classy. There you go. And with me, I am Joe. And with me, as always, is the He-Man to my Skeletor, Steve. I wanted to be Skeletor. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I was watching uh, Masters of the Universe the other day. It was on... Um, 
one of those like the Dolph Lundgren movie. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like <laughs> it was on like like Palladium or some like like higher le- channel cable, like one of those like weird ones that pop up for a few weeks and then they like, disappear. Mm. And I was like, Master of the Universe, and I was like. This movie's not as bad as I remember it being. It's actually quite enjoyable. I don't remember that movie at all. Oh man, it's uh, it's it, it, there's some really fun parts. Dolph Lundgren, I think, is is pretty good. Frank Langella is amazing. Yeah. yeah, no, he's more like, let this be our final battlefield. You yeah, know, which is lame because Skeletor is supposed to sound like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Skeletor has the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger and the voice of like a whiny nerd. Uh, it, I, Out of my way, He-Man! You foiled my plans for the last time! The Monarch has really spoiled that voice for me. I mean, the Monarch's just the Skeletor voice. I, yeah, exactly, but so. it, it's like, it, that's why it spoiled it for me. It's like, uh, I, I don't, the Frank Langella Skeletor is pretty amazing, I, I, I'll have to admit. And everything else in that movie is kind of... He's no yeah. Leonard Nimoy Galvatron. I don't. I, Leonard Nimoy's Galvatron never really did anything for me anyway. It wasn't like I the general. Once they got to the G two, like I know Pet B loves fucking um, uh, Unicron and Rodimus all that stuff. Prime. <laughs> yeah. Well, he loves everything with that movie, and I'm just like I was always like mm, I don't like any of this new stuff. At eight years old, I was like, <laughs> uh, it's too new. Pre Grognard. Yeah. He's yeah. like, whatever happened to G? What was wrong with G1? All of these characters were fine. Uh, they're all dead now. They got killed by Megatron on the spaceship. Yeah, but I mean, I'd... to instruments of destruction. <laughs> to instruments of destruction. No, I, I just, I didn't, they never, I didn't care about any of Dare those. Dare to be stupid was in that movie. It was. It was with the Junkatrons. Did. Yes. Voiced by John Cleese. Mm hmm. The yeah. leader of the Junkatrons. The leader of the ju- No, that was Eric Idle, not John Cleese. Was Eric Idle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew yeah. it was a Monty Python guy. You were you were correct. I'll, I'll, it's okay. It's okay. They're all the same to it's me. It's okay. They all sound the same. <laughs> um, getting back to what we were talking about earlier with uh, Games Workshop, they officially uh, shit-canned Tomb Kings now. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, they, sh- they officially shit-canned Warhammer Fantasy, so at this point, expect any army that doesn't <laughs> sell to get gone. <laughs> get gone. Yeah, the, uh, it, they're, they're gone. Expect. I mean, I would also expect older models to get discontinued as well. Yeah, uh, Bretonians are are. They'll probably get chickened as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, uh, considering that they have at the least Tomb Kings have an eighth edition army book, Bretonians right. have, haven't, Bretonians had an army. haven't had a book since sixth. sixth. It's yeah. still, Somehow, and they were still better than the Tomb Kings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I never understood. I don't like. I always thought the Tomb King and uh, the Bretonians had great models. Um. I never, I, the only ones that I didn't like were the archers, but I mean, even they weren't terrible. Mm. And but their that range was a beautiful range of figures, well fleshed out, cool special characters, pretty cool rules, and they just never did anything with them. They were like, no, I know. there were a lot of people who played Bretonians. Yeah, and it was a I th- I thought it was a solid army. Even in sixth edition, it was like a really good army in yeah, sixth edition. It was, but no. No, considering I mean they they went they, they they went from a being in a starter set faction yeah to fifth to being gone. How far the mighty have fallen? How far the Bretonians have fallen? But I mean it's Warhammer. <laughs> Workshop doesn't give a fuck about Warhammer. No, they don't. Now you have to have slayers on top of dragons. <laughs> so Lava dragons. I, those dragons are pretty cool looking. The dwarves look fucking awful. And the slayers are totally the dragons. No, don't, don't even. No. Don't even. No. <laughs> don't even. They're little tiny slayers with flaming like, mohawks no, riding lava dragons. They're like Blink-182 fans or something. <laughs> Where are you? And I'm riding a dragon. All the <laughs> small things. That's the reference to their they balls. Because you can't see them. Dwarves. Yeah, no, that was, I was gonna, the small things were reference to the dwarves. I was gonna say their, small. I was gonna say their balls because oh. they're you know like non-existent, even though they're naked. So, yeah, well, you can't have balls on ogre dick. <laughs> ogre. This is Steve's new metal band, Ogre Dick. Ogre Dick. Yeah, that's a good one. That's actually a really good name actually, for a metal band. I think, I think if our, uh, well, depending on depending on which metal, like if I was gonna go like like you could uh, if I was gonna go like really like death metal, I would go ogre schmegma. <laughs> mm, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I just think Ogre Dick is is short enough that it's Ogre like, Dick's definitely a good one though. That's a that's a yeah. I mean, of course you there's no no genre of music which has divided itself into more subgroups than metal. It's Essentially true. where every metal band is its own, it's its own genre. genre. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there is a band called Goblin Cock. Yeah, I mean, the, not yeah. to be confused with Goblin, who's a very sweet like synth band who did music for uh 
uh, Dawn of the Dead, and yeah. I think it was Dawn of the Dead. He did a bunch. Goblin did a bunch of soundtracks for horror movies, like yeah. very like synth heavy. Yeah, oh, Goblin's cool. good. I like Goblin. Okay, Goblin Cock, not so much. Not so much. No. Great name. Bad band. It's like Tangerine Orange. Uh, Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream. Uh, <laughs> Doing the soundtrack. Isn't that, to... isn't that Prince? No, Tangerine Dream was the guys who did soundtrack to Dune and mm. Blade Runner. Dune's a sweet movie. Mm-hmm. All I see is an Atreides, and I want him dead. I like Sting in the, those, yeah. those diaper thing. Feud Ralpha. <laughs> Feud Ralpha. Fierce the mind killer. All right, so what, what we got some we got some uh, some some gaming news to talk about. Do we have any gaming news to talk about? I mean, uh, not really. Yeah, no, I got a couple things here. I got nothing. I took a couple notes over the weekend. Oh, big one. Uh, Seven Seas coming back. <gasps> Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You, you are a pirate. pirate. Yar har fiddle dee dee. Being a pirate is all right with me. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. You are a pirate. <laughs> all right, so that's all we have to say on Seven C. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Did you ever play Seven C? Uh, I day? played the card game. You played the card game, obviously. Yeah. I played the card game, <laughs> but uh, it was it was a very good card game. Uh, the, this one supposedly is going to be a little more fleshed out, but I always thought that role playing as like a, just pirates is kind of hard. It, well, yeah, I mean, it. I, I've not re- not really hard, but like narrow. Like, how many sessions can you have of like you guys? Like, you guys are on a boat. You guys attack another boat. You guys are on a boat. You find an island. There's there's natives. You guys are on a boat. You find another boat. Like, it, you know, it's kind of a. Uh, eh. Well, I mean, D and D is never like the boat rules for D and D have never been very good either. Um, yeah, but nobody. I don't, I don't know. You just don't don't use the rules. <laughs> you just you never had the blue the, book ships of the sea. No, no. I, when whenever we did, whenever we ended up on a boat for D and D. Uh, it always was just kind of like hand waved. Yeah. Like if we had a, if there was a fight on the boat, it would always be boarding action. Yeah, it would just be because I mean we didn't do like because because D and D's like there's a weird thing where you know D and D's technology level is kind of random like mm-hmm. based on who yeah. you're right. so so for, it could be like a steamship. Well, or... like for our for our D and D, like they were never they they never had cannons. Okay. Like the boat, like cannons never existed in our D and D world. So okay. like oh, yeah. they, had, they had they had an arbalists. So like yeah, it was like like bull throwers, yeah. and then like there would be uh, ramming action, ramming, and then boarding. Yeah. So most times a fight between boats would just be a fight between crew rather than. Yeah, well, I mean that makes sense. I mean, I was actually just playing. I I was just I played a little bit of uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag the other day just because I kind of wanted to play some pirate boating action. That game did it so well. I heard the, that game, the best part about the game is just, like, piloting your ship around and singing sea, she, uh, sea, sea shanties. shanties. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I, I, I kind of want just a pirate game based on that engine. Just make it a little bit, like, because that was always the cool thing is, like, because you'd be like, I'm going around, and all of a sudden, like, you get higher and higher level ships you're going up against. But that would usually be pretty easy to take out. Like, they'd have, like, the four, they had four, like, legendary ships you went up against. And they were, like, super high level, and you had to take them out in a certain way. And there was, like, all these, like, obstacles, like, high, like rogue waves that you'd have to, like, navigate around to take out these ships. It was really cool to do, but, like, once you took them out, it was that game it would just became really, really, really repetitive. And that's saying that for an Assassin's Creed game, it became repetitive. Um, but, yeah, I wish they would do something else with that engine because it's real fun to do. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yarr! Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, of course. Um, I also want them to do something with the Nemesis engine. I've been playing a lot of uh, Shadows of Mordor. Shorter Shadows of Mordor still, and because I'm playing the endless. There probably will be more because like, there'll probably gonna be another Shadows of Mordor. Oh, I well the the what is it the right lead writer died, or or he has cancer or something uh, like that. I'm aware of. It's either the, one of the lead designers, a lead writer, or something like that. But whatever the case, the I've been playing because they have the 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 challenges on on Steam, and I've been mm. playing those a lot lately. And I think the Nemesis engine can work for other games. It just, they gotta find the right... It can actually work for, like, honestly, it could work for, like, GTA. Yeah, GTA. I think it could work for Batman. If well, it, I mean, but I mean, if you want to use the, the whole fight engine like like they currently use, I think it could work for I Batman. Meant the, I meant the actual, like, mechanics of, like, goons leveling up fight in fighting with one another and rising to the top. Yeah. I mean, they could work for anything. Like, that's what I was thinking for Batman. Like, why don't they do this for a Batman game instead of... the mob. Yeah. Or, you know, like, you could have, like, a couple guys, like... You start off with the top tier levels like Joker, Penguin, Two Face, Catwoman, maybe not Catwoman, but whomever, Mad Hatter, right? You have those. You have those four up as your as your your main bosses, and you have their their under goons. But as soon as you take out like the Joker, he could be replaced by an under goon, kind of the same mm. way. I think it could work, but yeah, you know, whatever. I think they should. Oh, you know what I would love to see? 
and I was just talking about this with a buddy. Game of Thrones is done in the Arkham uh, City style fight game, except you play as the uh, as the Hound. Okay. So it's you're the Hound. You're going through you're just like killing like killing a shit ton of people. Killing a <laughs> shit ton of people. Like it takes place right after the uh, the the Battle, the Battle Blackwater. Blackwater. So you're on your own. You're going through the Riverlands, and you know you have to avoid not only you know Lannister goons, but Brotherhood of the Banner, uh, Bro- Brothers Without Banners, and like Stark random people. Like you have to f- like make your way to try and you know whatever have you whatever you could follow. You could try and get Arya to. Uh, her her mother or wherever, and it can mm-hmm. end at the twins at the red wedding. But just think about that. If like as you're going through there, it's just you with this huge ass sword, like fucking going nuts on these guys. I mean, granted, you can't do like the flying or the uh, or the the kind of like super combos. They could do brutal like like visceral combat though, like yeah. like where like you punch a dude and he gets like staggered, and then you tackle him to the ground and like punch, punch his face into a, exactly into a burger. Would they be <laughs> fucking amazing? That'd be cool. And you have like the, like and of course you have the the goons like you could have like, the, like random outlaws or whatever else have you trying to get you yeah oh I think it'd be so cool yeah that could work yes anyway back to seven C um yeah I I, I never thought we covered that already uh, we, <laughs> we sang, sang the, the pirate, pirate song. song I know <laughs> um we, I was just talking with uh because I I had the the RPG back in the day I never played it I never got anybody who was interested in playing it. But I read through it numerous times, and I really liked the system. I think I think the idea was was good because um, it wasn't just you know there was a lot more political intrigue in it than just going on a pirate ship and going around. I'm sure that's what a yeah, lot of people like. Political liked. intrigue is generally not fun to role play. I don't know. It can be. Can't, I I did say you, generally. <laughs> yeah, you have to have that's a that's a DM thing. It's not like a play. It's, it's also a very very heavily play group thing. Like a lot of people are very bored by like just talking and not actually doing anything. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. You but, know, it's like opening your movie with the Galactic Senate. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he never actually opened up with the Galactic Senate. Uh, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. He opened up with trade negotiations. <laughs> I have a very bad feeling about this. Oh, the first line, Lucas. Really great. Good job. Good job. Uh, I actually just watched uh, Ex uh, Machina last night. You know, Speaking of you know, characters for, from Star Wars. You know what good for a first line? You have mm. a giant space battle going on, and you have Obi-Wan looking out the window and going like, hmm, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good opening line. That would have been good. Uh, uh, I, just, I heard Ex Machina was good. Have you not seen it yet? No. I saw Deadpool. Oh yeah, I saw good, that yesterday. good, bad. Uh, I liked don't, it a lot. Don't, don't spoil too much. Uh, spoiler: It's really good. <laughs> okay, because I'm going, I'm going to see it on Monday, and then me and Kevin are going to do comic book logic for yeah, it. So. All I can say is, spoiler: It's really good. That works. That works. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see it. But Ex Machina, no, it was, it was, it's a good sci-fi movie. I wanted to see it because it looked like there was going to be a sweet robot human fuck scene, but apparently that doesn't happen. No, not really. So like, I kind of lost interest. Like, like legitimately, I was like, "Fuck yeah, I want to watch this dude fuck a robot." And then it, uh, I, someone told me it doesn't happen, and I was just like, "Ugh, no, it don't happen." Uh. I like, <laughs> I like artificial intelligence movies though. Like, like that's like AI. Like, yeah, well, no, not AI, but yeah, well, I didn't think AI was that bad. It's... Creepy ass fucking Haley Joel Osment. Yeah. No, but I, I like. I like headier sci-fi movies. Like I like my sci-fi and very. Yeah, I wanted the movie to be where the robot was giving him head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I like my sci. My sci-fi movies have to be one of two things. They have to be either like super actiony, adventurey, like Episode Seven, like where it's just like we don't care about any of the actual science. That it's just we lasers and spaceships and. Pew, 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 or I want it like super fucking heady, like Moon or. Uh, ex machina that's like where i want the two it's very hard for me to like anything in the middle and that's where stuff like event horizon or i love event horizon i i, I like it but it's not <laughs> event, like event horizon is not a sci-fi movie that's a horror movie yeah in well, space yeah <laughs> uh, uh I, it's more of like a cthulhu movie in space yeah you know, and you know what you know what the, I, I i would like someone to correct me if i'm wrong but if they do correct me it's probably really shitty because i haven't heard of it what but i don't believe there's ever been a zombie sci-fi movie I'm sure there has. No, no. I'm sure there's a shitty one. Yeah. Because I've never heard of it. But like, I want like a you know like a legit like maybe not Dawn of the Dead level, but like a good zombie sci-fi movie. I imagine if they ever make a movie out of Dead Space, it would just be that because that's basically what Dead Space is. They're scarier. Necromorphs are scarier than zombies, but same kind of idea. Yeah. Um. Uh, maybe. Maybe. 
Yeah. Yeah. But like, that seems like a that seems like an easy like a space station full of zombies like seems like a thing. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that that doesn't exist as right? is. Right. Not that I could think of anything in particular like that. But. Right. It just like it would be it, you know like it seems like it would be a thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, well, I'm trying to think of like oh oh what's that um that Danny Boyle movie where they go to the restart the sun. Sun. I think it's called Sunshine. Yes, Sunshine. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. movie's great. Yeah. Oh, actually, that movie starts great and then has like a really weird left turn and then is not good. And then when the left turn is resolved, the movie gets good again. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's like in that weird middle thing where it tries to be. Yeah, the too... left turn is a huge spoiler, so I won't say it. But like, it's it's a stupid fucking spoiler where it tries to get too actiony, adventury, right? And it's not enough of the science for me. Like, it, well, it started... also it also came like it didn't. It wasn't. It didn't fit the theme of the movie. Like the entire movie was like theme A, and then suddenly they're like, "Well, here's all, also theme Z. We're gonna throw that into the movie." Yeah, yeah it, that was way too in the middle for like I like heady sci-fi or action adventure sci-fi. I don't like quite in the middle. Um, yeah. It's... What about Outland? Outlander. Not Outlander. I know Outland. Outland. Yeah. Sorry. It's it's really slow, and then suddenly <sighs> everyone's head start exploding. <laughs> yeah. It's it's. I put like Outland and like I'm, I'm in this penal colony in space. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird. That's a weird one. It's kind of like in the. I like Outland, but it's a, it's in that weird like '70s vein of like I, I don't quite know where to do with it. it. It's got yeah. a sick payoff for for sitting through that movie. You're just like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. I'm not gonna. I'm. It's just not one that I think about that quite that often. Mm. So uh, seven. I, I, I think of Outland frequently when I think of sci-fi because I kept trying to watch it uh, many many years ago. I kept trying to watch Outland, and I'd always start it like really late, and I'd fall asleep. Yeah, and I'd, like I'd be like twenty minutes into it, and I'd just be like, just sleeping, and I never, and I watched it so many times to try and complete it, and I was like, "Fuck, I can't," because I couldn't, rem- I never remember what was going on, so I had to restart it every time. And then one point, I finally watched it in the middle of the day and watched the whole thing, and I was like, "Man, I really wish I didn't keep falling asleep during this movie." <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. I recommend Outland. <laughs> I recommend Zardoz. Uh, Zardoz is <laughs> pretty out there. Speaking of Sean really, Connery if movies. If you're really interested in seeing Sean Connery in panties, then Zardoz is for you. If you want to see him wearing the I Mila... Mean, who the, isn't interested in if, seeing Sean Connery in panties? If you want to see him wearing the Mila Jovovich outfit from <laughs> from uh, Fifth Element. Mila Jovovich. Jovovich. Okay. So, you know, there's like a weird conspiracy about her online, about her age. Like, no one can ever peg down, like, what her real age is. Mm, she's probably in her 40s. I know, but the thing is, like, no one knows exactly her, like, her age. Because it, like, consistently changes. I don't know. If I had more information, I, I would I would tell you. Yeah, I know no, I know nothing about this conspiracy. I, it's better than the Bristol Palin uh, birth conspiracy. I don't know. What, I don't even know what that is. Look it up. It's I, worth I, your time. I don't, don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know that the guy who did Seven C's name was John Wick. <laughs> John Wick, dude, he's he's gotta get, he's gonna get vengeance for that dog. Vengeance for the so he's gonna start a Seven C Kickstarter. Um, so, but I mean, it's actually kind of cheap too. It's forty bucks for the main rule book. Why not? I mean, if it's a it's classic. I'll tell you why not. Faith, the sci-fi RPG. That's why not. Oh, Save yeah, your the, money for that. <laughs> you've been you've been uh, you've been hyping that, that one. You've been acting as the the Flava Flav hype man on yeah, that my, one. Yeah, my my uh, my boner for that has exploded. Why it's so much on that one? Uh, so it it's there's there's multiple reasons. There's like a there's a multitude now, and it's it's from every angle. Uh, I'm excited about the game. I'm excited. I'm excited about it from a business perspective. I'm excited about it from a player's perspective. I'm excited about it as an RPG enthusiast perspective. Okay, I'm a guy who knows none of this stuff. Sell me the game. Uh, well, first of all, it's a giant box. It's like a big box set. Okay. Uh, eighty dollar MSRP. Okay. Uh, which is actually only thirty dollars higher than a D and D player's handbook. So. Okay. I mean, Amazon discount out aside, but like MSRP. Uh, the game has board game components instead of a character sheet. Okay. And it uses cards instead of dice. Okay. So when you get your character, I hand you a board, and there's like a selection of uh, pictures you can choose from what your character looks like and where your stats are. I give you a bunch <clears throat> of numbers uh, from the, like little punched out numbers. Okay. And you you socket those into your board. Okay. Like it's a board game. And that's your character sheet. So okay. when you need to reference your character sheet, you look at your board. So it's the board game components. And then um, when you get an item, I give you a card that says like, you know, like power gauntlet, and it has the rules for the power gauntlet on the card. You put that next to your sheet. Shows you your equipment. It even it like slots in so you can see exactly what the bonuses are from the items you're carrying. Uh, special rules, a reminder token you put on your board, you flip it over and you're like, oh, I can do that. Like, uh, So like enhanced sensors. It'll say enhanced sensors on one side and you're like, oh yeah, what's that doing? On the other side, it's like, this is the rule it does. And you're like, oh, cool. 
So it's got more of a tactile, like easy, um, easy reference thing. So like people who aren't into RPGs uh, can easily ex- access that. Like you don't have to. One of the worst things about you know uh, D and D and like other games like that that have a lot of uh, inventory management or special items is you know your only experience with that item is writing it down on your character sheet. You know, it's like, uh, you know, ring of ring of bashing is like what's on your character sheet. And it's like, oh, yeah, what's that thing do? It's like, oh, OK, yeah, I got to write all this shit down. And it does. And when you use it, you look and you're like, oh, and you're likely to forget stuff. Like I've had people forget that they had like a bunch of things just because there's so much shit they're carrying. They forgot that they had that one narrow item that would be great. Uh, this one kind of eliminates that by having all of your items in full view. You know, they're that um, monsters npcs enemies are also from a deck of cards so when i say you're fighting i like slap down three cards you see the stats of what you're fighting so you know that there's two guys who are good at range a guy who's good at melee so you don't like run up and like i'm gonna punch the guy who's really good at swords and i'm mediocre um the way combat works and any tests work is first of all if your character has the skill he succeeds unless i want to stop you if i think it's interesting that you would fail like as the dm okay uh and I'd, so or if there's a reason it would be interesting that you failed so example you're a computer hacker and you've like broken you've successfully broken into a uh you, do, you didn't say it no oh, i'm hacking into the mainframe uh i'm in there you go <laughs> i'm in <laughs> yeah that's the fucking worst um so say you're a computer hacker and you uh you've broken into like Hacks some or. you've broken into like some super rich fucker's house like like a corporate owner and you like no one's there like you bypass the security and you're hacking his computer well in my case it'd be like you succeed like you do that like you get the information you're looking for now let's say you're in a building that has a lot of security and if they detect you hacking there's gonna be a fucking security patrol coming after your ass then i go okay well now i'm gonna put a challenge in front of you so then i play a card because the dm also has a deck of cards so I play a card down. I'm like, it's a seven, and there's one more card I can play. And you know what your your so your hacking skill is a three, and you're like, okay, well I'll put a five down because my five and my uh, hacking skill is an eight. That's greater than the seven. Then as the DM, I can play another card, and be like, okay, here's a six. And then if you want to pass, you have to beat that six. Hmm. And then you pass the test, you you negate it. Or do you want to save your card? Like maybe your your cards in hand are really high and you're just like, "Mm, I'm going to save this for the combat. And it's like, fine. You know, you just, you relent. I kind of like that idea. That idea sounds good to me. So far it's like, I'm like, okay, it sounds, but it sounds pretty standard for a lot of it. I mean, like I like the idea of the card punch and like having cards and stuff like that. As a player that might get a little too fiddly because you have to keep that up every, every session. Like you'd have to make sure that your card, your board stays the same. Uh, it pl- from what I haven't seen the components in person. Yeah, but it looks like they plug in. Okay, like it's not like they're resting and like if you tip the board, it falls over. Yeah, that's it's what actually I actually was... like a slot. You like slot the token into. Okay, so like things don't fall out. Because I mean that's always been the nice thing about a character sheet is the character sheet's just a piece of paper. You right. stick it in the, the folder. This, you're fine. this is kind of the same thing. Like you just stack them up and put them in the book. You stick it. You stick it in your your, your biology textbook, and then when when you accidentally. <laughs> falls out and the jack sees it and he's like what's this nerd face and you're like, that's my uh that's, that's my, my le- cleric that's my cleric <laughs> don't touch my cleric <laughs> what's a cleric poindexter <laughs> a, uh, he's a uh he's a, a, a he's mag- a holy man <laughs> he's a he's a holy man who uses his, his magic for healing and uh his combat's usually just, uh, you know, melee. No, and he his, hits things with a mace. His, his melee is not really using bladed weapons. I it's... hit things with a mace. <laughs> Holy man, shouldn't use weapons at all, nerd. <laughs> uh, no, so it... Pick a warrior or a wizard. <laughs> Choose a side. So, Loser. So, <laughs> so uh... check out in Poindexter over and then here. The decks just go to yeah. you. Just you just take the cards and you stick it with your deck. Uh, I, I'm I'm excited to see what the actual components are, so I can give a, f- a complete review after you know seeing the game. Yeah. Uh, but conceptually, it's great. Uh, advantage is, is advantage. It's a, is, is it another its own thing world? It has. It's its own world. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's its own thing. Um, the the game also has an advantage disadvantage system. Uh, it has like your when you have a skill, there's like a cap. So there's, there's two yeah. things. So there's how there's uh, your skills determine uh, your character determines how many cards you can play, and what your bonus is. So the, the max is three. So the maximum amount of cards you can ever play in a situation is three. Okay. Uh, then when you are... Items can give you a, a number of advantages. And role-playing well can also give you advantages. When there's, con- when there's, a, con- when there's a contested... Uh, contested. When there's a contested uh, action. So the DM 
when they do like if you're trying to hack or lockpick or use a skill and the DM's contesting, he always has two is he or she always has two advantages. So if you're trying to hack, I have two advantages, which means if you don't have any advantages to the skill, I'm going to be the advantaged party. Now the only the difference between the advantages and disadvantages, the actual number of advantages don't matter. It's just who is higher at the end of the day. And the losing side takes a minus one penalty on how many cards they can play. So if you could play three, you can only play two. If you could play two, you can only play one. And I believe if you can only play one, you can no longer play a card, so you're on raw skill. Nice. Uh, which is very bad, which means you're probably going to fail. Uh, I believe. I, there, it might be to a minimum of one, but I, I'm not certain on that. I don't remember. I read the rules, but I only read them once. I haven't uh, insorbed them. Insorbed them? Yes. Um. Well, you were talking, it reminded me of something. I'm going to try and bring it up real quick. Uh, we got a new review on our on our podcast. Oh, on, on iTunes? On iTunes. Oh, man. Major Havoc, just recently, February 4th, wrote, um, they seem to have plenty of negative things to say, and they can't seem to focus. And in some cases, they love to hate on things. Offens Games Workshop. I guess the classy part was sarcasm. Yay! Yay! <laughs> One star review. Yay! So, yay! Thanks, thanks, General Havoc. <laughs> Major Havoc. You're giving, oh, him, you're giving him far I, too I much credit. I didn't mean to give him that undue promotion. <laughs> yeah, battlefield promotion right there. It's like, yes. The class- they didn't talk about 40K tactics for three hours. <laughs> uh, yes. To answer your question, Major Havoc, if you are listening to this, the classy part is sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> I don't even know, like, like the 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 level like it's like watching the young ones and you're like none of these characters are actually young they're all in their 40s yes we understand that's part of the joke yeah I, 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 you know, well i mean we, we, we'll never be a popular gaming podcast because we're not like the popular gaming podcast the popular gaming podcasts are awful yeah they're the, all they're all like why are you playing a cleric nerd they're no they're the <laughs> fucking three hour like 40k tacticas <laughs> like oh uh, yeah i mean uh, i was really like thinking about taking the bolters but i really, really like to do the meltagon mm-hmm. instead and just bleh, bleh. And it's like, wow, you talk about fucking Space Marines for three fucking hours straight. Thanks, dildo. Yeah, people still like it, though. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. People like it. But people like terrible things. The most popular person on, U- on YouTube is PewDiePie. Pee Wee Dee Dee. Like, that dude, all he does is flail around, has a stupid accent, and screams. Like, he's the number one <laughs> by a fucking landslide. One of the things that... Uh, people gravitate towards shit. Have you... And then shit rolls downhill and collects more shit and gets bigger. And then there's a giant mountainous shit turd that some people look at and go like, I should probably get out of the way of that, but I don't know, maybe they're having fun. And then they get rolled over <laughs> by the shit turd. Uh, well, I was... You know, because YouTube just opened up like that subscription service. That it's, it's bombing horribly. Yeah. But I think part of that... Part of the interest in that is, and like I've been reading a couple articles on this, and this is just like my own sake of interest on this, is that a lot of these like super popular YouTube channels, like, and that hypothetically PewDiePie, they actually don't like have that many like people who watch it on a regular basis. It's like a lot of that is like, I guess people just sub for no reason. Like, they just like, oh, I like this sub. And then they never watch anything else that the person right. does the, again. You're, you're, the, the subscriber count is always an inflated amount of people who are actually watching your videos. But, for example, like the the Fine Brothers, those pieces of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just heard uh, about that, yeah, too. Yeah, that thing's blowing up in their fucking face. They've lost almost 1.5 million subscribers. <laughs> but the thing uh, is, is like when you lose 1.5 million, it's just people who are like, I don't like this guy. I'm unsubbing it, them. It will correlate to views because here's the thing. They have – their yeah. channel had like 14 million and counting. Now yeah. it's – now it's uh, – it's, they're, they're on the way to losing that many subscribers. It's like 13 million and something now. Yeah. But when their, when their channel had 14 million subscribers, their videos were averaging, give or take, 6 million hits. Like, in, like, the time frame. Because like, yeah. videos get hit, like, it's hard to judge. Not hard to judge, but, like, videos, uh, the amount of hits a video get... You know, changes because how long has the video been out? Is it still viral? Like, yeah. is it still a meme? Like, can you reference like Ice JJ Fish? Ice JJ Fish's video has forty five million hits. Like, I have no idea what Ice JJ oh, Fish's I'll, video is. Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> I, um, I'm just, I don't get YouTube, man. I just uh, don't. I don't get YouTube. That's just the internet. I I I, I don't, get, don't get the internet. <laughs> I don't get the internet. I um, I like having so, political discourse with people who hate unions on uh, on 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 Reddit. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what happens to me. Uh, it sounds. I could change this guy's opinion with classic. Yeah, and with no, you can't. I, I, I have to stop myself because I'm like, I could change this guy's opinion with rationalized thought. I no, had wait, a, uh, you can't change this I, guy's opinion. I actually had a. Um, I was talking to someone about how like what I like to argue about and what I like to you know yeah. chit chat about and stuff and like you know complain etc. And I said, like, I never, I try to avoid, I, I generally do not, I, I'm very, very careful about it, and, and I don't think I really break my rule here, but uh, I try never to argue with someone who is objectively wrong. That's because some... if they believe something that is objectively wrong, and they're, like, my age or my, my peer, uh, if they've gotten to this point in their life vehemently believing something that is just objectively wrong, nothing I do or say will ever change their mind. Yeah. If, if, if you said, I believe the earth is flat, there is nothing I could do or say to convince you otherwise because you have come to that conclusion in, the fa in, in defiance of the infinite evidence <laughs> to the contrary. And you're just like, nope, it's a big conspiracy. The earth is flat. I can't convince you otherwise. So... Arguing that point to you is a waste of time. No, oh, yeah. Like, and people and po political arguments for the most part are actually objective and not subjective. Like, do people deserve human rights? Yes, they objectively deserve human rights. But you have a lot of people on the more conservative end of the spectrum who are like, no, they don't. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's objectively wrong. I can't argue with you because you're insane. What is. <laughs> One of the, uh, <laughs> so I found someone that Which I. Which is why I like arguing about superheroes. Yeah. I'm like, you know, your superhero's stupid because it's fucking, it's, it's all, all opinion. opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was talking, I, I was, I found a guy who I know on Reddit. I found his username just because I happened to see he posted an article on Reddit. And it was an article that I know he posted somewhere else. I was like, oh, that's this guy's username. So I went and I looked at his history just to kind of, you know, look at some of the other stuff he's posted. And it was like all like really like crazy red pillar stuff and like like defending like the pro rape groups and i'm like oh oh this guy's bad <laughs> i'm i'm not gonna talk to this guy ever again <laughs> yep yeah i'm not this is this is bad oh yeah they're 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 fucking ridiculous yeah that, but that's the thing like i can't you can't argue people who are objectively wrong and even and even sometimes on some things like yeah, um yeah. you like i i even on some things, like uh, if it's a movement or a group or whatever, they might actually have a couple of valid points. However, if you if your point to if the if the total number of points in your, you know, mo movement is one hundred, and you have two that are legitimate and ninety eight that are not, your movement is not legitimate. <laughs> yeah. No. You're. It's like going to a. Uh, what would be a good example of this? It's I'd like going to, I'd say Gamergate would be the would be the example yeah. for me because there they, there are like two good points that Gamergate ha Gamergate has, yeah. and then there's ninety eight plus that are not. <laughs> to to give people a visual, it's like going to a party, and when you go inside the party, there's two really really attractive girls at the party, and ninety eight guys dressed like juggalos. <laughs> also, they have trilbies. <laughs> but no, they got the they got the full Juggalo face paint, everything, the drink of the Fago. And Trilbies. And Trilbies. They're wearing Trilbies. And you're just like, yeah, these are two really attractive girls. 98 way too many Juggalos. There's way too many Juggalos. I'm going to just leave. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> I thought uh, Nikki was coming over here. I thought she was coming to defend the Juggalos. Nobody's uh, defending the Juggalos. No Nobody's. <laughs> Was there no one to defend the juggalos? Yeah, other juggalos. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's go on. Um, another Kickstarter that's actually making a lot of money, and you talked about this a little bit on the Facebook page, is uh, Cyanide and Happiness has their Kickstarter coming out because Oatmeal has one. Might as well have Cyanide and Happiness. Um, and this one, it's just... It's, Two points. One, Cyanide and Happiness. Yes, it's actually funny. Two, he draws worse than the Oatmeal guy, who already draws really <laughs> shitty. shitty. Yeah. <laughs> um... I kind of like the idea, but it's just a, a physical form of, of their comic strip generator. So the, the game basically works. It, it's like apples to apples or, or cards against humanity. So it'd be fun for like three sessions and then you'll be really bored with it if you have any sense of humor. But yeah, you get um, whoever's turn I is. I find those games all work as good drunk party games. Yeah, but I mean, you get like three or four. So you, if you're still if you're drunk enough, you can play it as yeah. many times as you want. The, it's it's basically a three strip comic game. You get one, and each panel is a card. So you put down the the judge puts down the first card, 
Um, then I think it's like he puts it on the second. He puts it on. He picks to pick the second card that will go to it, and then everyone around the table picks what will be what would be the punchline card, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of fun to do like a punchline thing. Um, I don't hate the game conceptually. Yeah, the, but it's like. So uh, I was thinking about this, and outright I'm just like, oh, this is stupid. This is just Cards Against Humanity. But then I thought about it. I'm like, the point of Cards Against Humanity is to do like the most what people would think would be the most offensive thing. Oh, it's to pander to the judge. To pander to the judge. Like you, like I think you would, like I think you would think that um, Grandma's gonna find the biggest blackest dick hysterical. Right. Yeah. Grandma's gonna find that really funny. I'm gonna yeah. make, I'm gonna use that exactly. for save that for Grandma. grandma. Yeah. But this and one for Joe, I'll save Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> I find this joke to be very funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so but I like the idea of coming up with an objectively funny, making an objectively funny three panel cartoon. I think that concept works on a little bit of a higher level than the straight up Cards Against Humanity. But that's why. But I don't think it'll be as popular is Cards Against Humanity because Cards Against Humanity is all about just going for the lowest common denominator joke. This one is actually making about constructing a funny joke. Right. And I think that takes a little bit more talent, a little bit more skill. So, but I mean, it's not perfect, but I do, I think it's an interesting game. It's kind of cheap. I would, I might, I wouldn't. I can't vehemently stand against the cyanide and happiness guy because like I said, he's, he's got some funny jokes, but like, man, I, I really dislike when people uh, get like very successful and they draw like shit and like they're, they're, their craft is drawing. And, like, they're really successful, and they draw terribly. Like, that always, like, irks the shit out of me. Because I see artists who, like, perfect, Altered, perfect example. Altered is, Altered's decently popular. Uh, I just got a text from my from my wife saying that her that her sister's coming over with my nieces, and I'm you're, just, you're very excited about I'm it? Like, ah, 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 we're going to order pizza and let the kids play. And I'm like, ah. Is there anything I can do that's not this? <laughs> I gotta come up with something quick. <laughs> Hashtag wrecked. Uh, Alter Hash draws infinitely better yeah, than the yeah. cyanide and happiness guy. Yeah. And is very funny. So like when I see someone who's in my you know, in my opinion, much better at everything that the other person is doing and they're less successful, it always irks me. It's just like fuck. It's like this guy draws better than you and he's funnier. <laughs> yeah, I mean but the, the I don't know. I always I'm a big I'm a I talked about this on comic book logic. Uh, I'm a big comic strip fan, so like Growing up, I always read the comic section of the newspaper. The funnies. Always read the funnies. Right, but the funnies are all drawn better than Cyanide and Happiness. And that's the thing that I find... Cyanide and Happiness are fucking stick figures. Yeah, but the, and that's what I, I kind of find funny about how modern day web comics work is that they it used to be about the talent behind... You would have to draw something very well, and you'd have to craft a funny joke. Or at least do decently in, like, the cartooning style. Like, yeah, like but Dilbert is a simple cartoon. Like, looks sim simple, but Dilbert works. And, like, I wouldn't call Dilbert bad. Like, I wouldn't call the, the illustration Dilbert. It's simple, yeah. but it's not bad. It's but not stick figures. But Dilbert's even, even Dilbert is more modern than, like, the majority of the comics in the paper. Well, I sure, mean, like Marmaduke and, you know, <laughs> like, the old shit. Marmaduke is an asshole. Marmaduke's old as fuck, too. Well, yeah. That dog should have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> well, it is a great day, and they only live, like, seven years. Exactly. Um, but you, yeah. But I find that about modern-day webcomics is that the drawing style doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's beneficial to have a nicely drawn oh, comic. It could be shit. Yeah, but it's it all is, of, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of them are shit. <laughs> but it's all about crafting the joke, which is is the, the main part. Um... And that's the thing is like a lot of the people who draw very well often don't let their comics go for a very long time because it's very time consuming. I mean, look at um, uh, oh, what's that guy's name? The one who does like the really, really, really fancy cartoons and like they're like Bill Waters. <laughs> no, no, they're like painted almost. Uh, he hasn't done one in a long ass time. He's the guy who did Weeaboo for the first time. Oh, oh the, the Perry uh, Bible Fellowship. Perry Bible Fellowship. Yeah, yeah. his he's, stuff he's is fantastic. gorgeous. Yeah. And it's like. But he doesn't do it that often because he, he used to. Well, yeah. he used to have an update schedule. He like retired from it. I don't know what he's yeah. doing now. I mean, but uh, yeah, just didn't want to do it anymore. I mean, there's we a boo, we a boo. What was it? It was like, and if you'll see the uh, fiscal quarter here, it moves down to we a boo. <laughs> he's like, and like, did somebody say, say we a boo? <laughs> What is it? Pro scub and anti scub. Yeah, anti scub and pro scub. <laughs> just tubs. It's a scub, and not scub. <laughs> uh, yes, that's, that's it, funny. 
That guy was genius. Uh, absolutely. I and mean, he still makes comics every so often. Yeah, and there's there's actually a guy. Who... I too have lost a kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> he gets arrested. There's you no, know, and there's like a couple who who have done like incredibly beautiful. Uh... And the the one with the bees. Careful, she wields the chaos grid, and it's a fucking electric fly, fly swatter. The chaos grid. The chaos grid, and the bees are all fucking like medieval. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, that the... is a. Uh... God damn. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, no, good stuff. there's like there's a couple I can't I can't really think of a lot of their names, but they often fall behind because they're so well drawn. It's very hard to do weekly let alone daily like some of these guys do. Like Bill Waterson did. Um, oh yeah, they, they, all the other comic strips artists hated Bill Waterson cuz he like did in his his work was super high end. Yeah, and he never sold out. Never sold any of the rights to any of it. All right, so Yet there still managed to be a million billion Calvin's pissing on things. Well, everyone always stole that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one, the, the Calvin and Hobbes jumping on the trampoline, is also the uh, most um, possibly the most pirated image in all of comicdom for T-shirts and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, uh, hold, with, oh, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kickstarter too. Have you seen this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a homicide. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not cool. It's IDW doing it. Yeah, I mean, so it's going to be like the Ghostbusters game or, you know, it, it's bum, not bum, actually Zombicide. I heard the uh, the review of the Ghostbusters bum, bum, game bum, bum, is thus. The basic difficulty is very, very easy, and the hard difficulty is impossible. <laughs> 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 that's, what I, uh, that's what I heard. I heard it's a fun game, though. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It, it looks like a very, it looks very, very cool. And, like, it's, you know what it looks like? It looks like one I'm of those. terrified beyond capacity for all rational thought. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cross the streams. Um, it looks like one of those games that if you want to do a Zombicide game, this would be the game you focus on. You get all your figures. You get someone to paint them up really nicely. Or Black Plague. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's it's one of those games. It's like if you're into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this is one of those games where you, you buy in the Kickstarter, you get all the shit, you get someone to paint up really nicely, and you, you treat that very nicely, and that is your Zombicide-style game. I don't think I'd paint it. I don't think I'd even get it painted. I think like board game components are like. I, mm. yeah, but I'm saying like I'm a fan of like doing the. Uh, so, so what I want what the plan is like for Kingdom Death, I'm gonna do the entire thing as a sepia tone. Yeah, why don't you just open up the box so we can see it? Sorry, can't wait for you. All right, I have to wait for someone else. Um, is it Jesus? It is Jesus. Nice. Uh, no, the uh, so the idea I've got for that is I'm just gonna spray it white and then just wash it sepia. <laughs> it comes in a pizza box. <laughs> Finally, uh, so I'm just gonna spray it white and then wash it sepia oh, and call it sense. call it a daisy. Oh my god, that hurts my soul. Good. I mean, if, if if it also control you on top of being easy for me, like I, I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> Consider me trolls. Yay! Um, yeah, that's what I would do for the Ninja Turtles. I would spray paint them if they're not already green. I would spray paint them green and wash them green. And then for the enemies, I would the foot soldiers. I would spray them purple and wash them black. Call it a daisy. Um, so some of the things that I do like about this, I like that it comes with not only the the regular Ninja Turtles, but it also comes with a Kevin Eastman and uh, Lar uh, an East yeah Kevin Eastman variant. So it looks like the original comic book. The stocky turtles. black and white turtles. Yeah, the stocky. Well, so those yeah. I would spray white and wash, wash black. Yeah. Oh, I mean that would be kind of cool also, to do. Call it a daisy. <laughs> that actually would be kind of nice to do. It's because uh, a buddy of mine, Dwayne, is doing like his Adepticon army for bolt action in black and white. Like it's just he's doing Germans. He's doing them all in a black and white. Like, yeah. I mean, I think everyone. I think everyone should paint their you know paint their models like yeah. correctly. I mean, I it's, guess, it's but... very nicely done, and it's like it's stylized. It's not like just paint, spray white right. and like with... it's like the, the the von Karstein black and white army that someone was always talking about doing. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's it was very it's very cool, and I think that would be actually kind of cool to do with the Eastman, the with the, the Eastman turtles. But the board board games generally have so many components, and yeah. you're only going to play it when you're playing the board game. I think spending a lot of time to get it painted but unless what, you're using it constantly well like, this is what i say it's like even then like they're gonna take a lot of like you know play damage is gonna be a thing so like i don't know i would get annoyed like no this is listen yeah. to what i'm saying listen to what i'm saying i can't <laughs> a normal human being not us you know someone who's only going to have like this is their zombicide this is like oh i just say that like it's that style of game they're gonna have one of those and i would say you know, you could be Ghostbusters, you could do Turtles, you could do Zombicide, you could do Black Plague, whatever you're going to do, there's going to be one of them that you want to do. Or, uh, you know, the, the one that Dragon Forge did, any of those. So you pick the one that you're going to do, you focus on only that one, you get those figures painted, and that's your game. That's the only... So anytime you want to play a game like that, 
you use just those figures that you already have painted up. You treat it nicely, something like that. Now, that's almost impossible to do with Zombicide because there's so many Zombicides. So you'd constantly have to add more stuff to it. But I'm saying it like it would take it wouldn't take that much effort to do just that. I mean, I, like I think it would take a Herculean effort to do Zombicide. Well, yeah, but I mean, just like the Turtle game. Oh, until the next one comes. Well, or the expansions. I don't know then, if they're gonna do that. But I mean, that's the thing you don't know. So it's like. I mean, a good example of that is... I guess I'm less... I guess I care a lot less about the aesthetics of something I'm playing as a board game. Yeah. Because the majority of its life is going to be in its box in the closet or in its box on the game shelf. Yeah. If I'm going to like put it in a display shelf, like, that's a different thing. But I don't think anyone's displaying their board game figures. I mean, they would if they're painted. They're nicely painted. Would they? A lot I don't of them know. are the same I sculpt. My, I, have, like, I have my stuff displayed it's like there's a lot if i painted it it's displayed like zombies in zombicide we'll use that again you know most of them they're doing the like left arm kind of forward right arm really forward like there's like 50 of those yeah so i don't really well i mean i know eh. like uh i know eh. i know cliff maybe the heroes paint cliff, the heroes cliff does all of his imperial assault figures those are all painted so like and that's what he's focusing on is just the imperial assault and i guess because the expansions come out so slowly i guess you probably could keep up with that if you you know just did your basic thing he paint he just put up uh, on facebook that he painted a uh, scout web gunner yes and i was like scout troopers they're the emperor's b team <laughs> i don't know i think that i think that's silly well i mean more power to you you do whatever you want with your figures but it just seems like you know, I, mean, I don't know. I, I see figures. And I'm just like, these must be painted. <laughs> I saw um, at a half price books the other day, I saw a copy of X-Men Danger Room, the the board game that came with all of the X-Men, like the little statues of the X-Men. And I was like, oh, uh, 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 X-Men, I would love to buy that and just and, and paint those figures because I painted the, uh, a set of those a long ass time ago in a very early commission I did. Um, I would love to redo that and like make it look nice. But I was like, and but the box was like forty five dollars, and I'm like, fuck no, not for that. <laughs> the danger room, or you know, escape from the danger room, whatever it was called. But the danger room, because um, the 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 people who did the the Batman game, the Arkham Asylum miniatures or Arkham City miniatures, they're doing a, a Marvel Universe game yeah, now. Night models, mm -hmm. night models. Thank you. Oh god, like their rules are just so nigh incomprehensible. Well, yeah, I mean they're they're Google translated Spanish rules. And, and they're like they're like the first edition of Infinity. <laughs> and the problem on top of that is is that you have okay, so you get your Colossus figure. Are you gonna paint Colossus in any way other than how he looks in the comic? No. No. So, so I'm just gonna leave him like that and paint his clothes because he looks like metal. <laughs> but I mean okay, so Yeah. <laughs> let's say you get Cyclops. Are you gonna paint him any other way besides how Cyclops looks in the comic? I mean you could paint him with the black outfit instead of the blue one, or the blue one instead of the black one. But I mean it's going to be exactly the same as it looks in the comic, even if you paint the black outfit or the blue outfit. Yeah, I mean, most likely. You're probably not going to paint them purple. Yeah, so why don't they just come and pre-paint it? Because they're metal. Oh, it's so stupid. It's such a stupid... For the amount of money you're paying on those figures, it's like... Uh, 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 X-Men. Why even Well, bother? the amount of money you're paying would have to imply that someone is actually buying them. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, finally, before we go, um, two deaths, right? Wayne England. Wayne England. He, epic artist. Epic artist. He did the, the, the classic... Um, Chaos Space Marines Chaos Codex. Space Marines Codex. Third yeah. edition. That's the one I just I just, I just pulled up. Yeah. And then he also did uh, the uh, Servants of Chaos, I think. Where, uh, uh, Champions of Chaos. Yeah, with the dude with the gauntlet. Yeah, that was... Oh, that was the lightning a... in his eyes. That was a sick-ass cover, too. Yeah, no, he just uh, did a lot of... He uh, did magic cards. He did magic, Johnny Vengeance, yeah. a shit ton of magic cards. He did D&D stuff. Like, he, the dude was in, like... he. If you played a game, you've probably seen his art. Yeah, and his artwork is... It's pretty iconic. It's it's yeah. fun and iconic. It's not like... Like, I always think of... Uh, 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 Elmore. Gary Elmore. Like, I always, like... I look at his artwork, because it pops up every once in a while, because I like getting, like, real prints of art, mm -hmm. of, like, fantasy art. And I'm just like, I see Elmore's art, and I'm just like, ugh, I hate the way this looks. <laughs> like, it looks... Elmore's pretty classic high fantasy. He's no Boris Vallejo, but, I, you know. it, it, It's classic high fantasy, but I just, I, it just does nothing for me. Like, I, I like stuff like, um, li like Brahm or, or Vallejo. Yeah, Brahm's awesome. Or, um, or... Brahm is my favorite fantasy artist. Brahm, of course he is. You, you just, you love the muscle. You love that, that mass ratio. And it's good stuff. I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he does. He does draw some buff women. Yeah, I mean, and uh, of course, Giger is my favorite artist. But yeah, I mean, 
But well, Gear, I wouldn't say, is a fantasy artist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's a he's he's a, a genre artist. Yeah, he's yeah like you a, could say. The, but he's not like one of those guys that do, that does stuff for uh, for for like games. No, I just did whatever yeah. random shit he did. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to paint this, and this is what I like to paint because it's a giant penis with teeth. Uh, no, they never has teeth. This is a didn't the the xenomorph have teeth? Uh, yeah, but it also had a dick. Yeah. But the dick didn't have teeth. <laughs> well, but I'm saying, it's like the, the xenomorph's head was a giant penis. No, it, well, see, sort of. Like, it kind of looked like that, but it actually, like, the original tail was a, was a big dick it was holding yeah, over its head. Yeah, it was head. like, it's just but dicks it wasn't on top head. of dicks. There's a lot of dicks. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I'm not arguing that there wasn't more penises on there, <laughs> but the head of that of the xenomorph was a pretty penis-y. penis but it didn't actually have that. Like, most of the time when he when he put a dick in something, it had the head. Yeah. The, oh, well, yeah, the, yeah. The, the back of the alien's head didn't have the dick head, the head of the dick. Well, yeah, no, it's like it's the, the alien eggs were giant were giant labias, but they didn't actually have a clitoris They, they on were them. just onesies, and then yeah. they complained, the Catholic Church complained, so he made them double. Doubles, yeah, <laughs> double, he, double, he, yeah. Geiger, Geiger yeah. hated the Catholics. Well, I mean, I, 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 I understand his art, but I'm just saying it's like it doesn't have to be anatomically correct in order for it to be a penis, is what I'm saying. Or does it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like a, it's a it's a, a Georgia O'Keeffe uh, vagina orchid from you know from her that displayed in museums. But uh, what was I going to say? Uh, are you eating a can of cheese? This is a uh, butterscotch protein pudding. Oh, okay. It looks like like nacho cheese. Oh, yeah, it's butterscotch color. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that you do eat on the podcast. You couldn't wait the the like literal three minutes before we're done with this. I mean, I'm not eating into the mic. Well, what's the other what's the other artist who died? I guess he he did the Black Lotus. Christopher Rush. Christopher Rush. He did a bunch of busted ass fucking magic cards. Yeah. Lightning Bolt, Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall. He did a ton of stuff. Classic yeah. magic artist from the the early '90s. Yeah, and he he died too. I mean, like I. I you know, I understand, like, people are like, oh, 2016 sucks so bad, so many people have died. I'm like, you know, people die all the time. And, you know, you, you could be sad about it for a little bit, put your memoriam, but don't blame 2016 for this. I would just blame the fact that human beings die. Uh, well, it's a lot of artists dying very close together. together. Yeah, I mean, you know, people that, we you know, we tend to care about, you know, like, if it was like a bunch of football footballers who died, I'm, I'm sure I'd just be like, mm, I don't really care that much. I would not care at all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, unless it was Bye-bye. unless it was William the Refrigerator Perry, then he's you'd already care. dead. No, he's alive. No, he died like a long time ago. No. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is a, this is how much I care about sports <laughs> ball right here. Get him back in your Hobbit feet. <laughs> uh no, he's still alive. Oh, all right. There you go. I was like, well, who's the who's the Bears football man that died? Oh, oh, um, you're, you're I okay. You're thinking of Walter Payton. That's who you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah Walter Payton, Payton Manning. That's the one. Yeah, Walter Payton died a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> they had a museum for him at the Roundhouse in Aurora because it used to be Walter Payton's Roundhouse. That sounds stupid. Yeah. Hey. But anyway, sports uh, are bad, and people who like sports should feel bad. What, you didn't watch the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl? I sure didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't see the the commercials and how important they are to our relevant interests. Well, here's the thing about the commercials in the Stupid Bowl. At this point, they're all up on YouTube weeks before they're on the fucking the big game. Like it's all I saw on YouTube was just like. Big game ad, big game ad. I'm like, why am I watching? Why would I watch big game commercials? Who fucking gives a shit? Fucking weirdos. Like, I'm hoping that the younger generation care. Like, if if the sports card collectible industry is any indication, and I can only hope that this is true, the younger generations are caring less and less about professional sports because the sports card industry is deeply struggling and it's only surviving because people who are basically our age and up are spending money on sports memorabilia like buying cards and stuff like that so the industry still exists because there are still people to buy it but it's in decline and it's always in decline so i can only hope that means that the younger generations don't give a fuck about sports and as time drags on eventually sports will become a memory because professional sports are a bane on the taxpayer they're a bane on people who live in cities with stadiums they're a bane on poor people where they put up gig- uh, in poor countries where they put up gigantic fucking stadiums and just like re- literally wreck people's lives for fucking sport ball. Like, yeah. they're they're a goddamn public nuisance. 
Um, yeah, it's probably not going to happen. I can, like I said, I can only hope. Yeah, it's I, I, I don't necessarily think that we, we, me and you can, we can hate sports together, Steve. We can hold hands and and jerk each other off about how much we hate sports. Good. <laughs> I don't really hate the sports themselves. I just hate the professional sports, like. The shit they do is fucking nonsense. Like, I don't like the fact that I that the money that the government steals from me to pay for things. They don't really steal from you. It's kind of a contract. Well, see, it's not a contract because I'd have some fucking choice in the matter. And I'd be like, I would like to not send any of my money you're taking always to sport balls. No, no tax for sport balls. Uh, no tax for Boy Scouts. Well, that's uh, no tax for, you know. Well, that's but that's that's kind of the that's what I say. It's like it's a contract in that. When you would elect an official in a, in, a, in a republic democracy, it's that you are electing a person who is going to vote for your interests and give your tax money to your interests. Now, the, Except that's not going to work. You know that doesn't work. But it, that's the thing is that it's, it's a group effort. So this person, this representative for you, has to work amongst other representatives. Well, not only does a group of large amounts of people have to somehow come together and compromise to find a a candidate who shares their interests but they also have to work together that, that representative has to work amongst other people who have differing interests about what they're going to spend the money for so it's not like we can have a direct democracy because a direct democracy would basically mean slavery still exists you think it doesn't well i mean but i mean like in a more overt fashion you think it doesn't <laughs> Yes, it does not. Slavery in the United States is is does not truly exist, like in terms of slavery. Uh, I, I mean, mean, you could make an it's, argument. It, it's not it's not an institution, but it definitely yeah. is out there. Slavery as an institution does not exist, but yes, yeah, slavery does exist, and it's still illegal. This is true, but it's 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 not necessarily a legal form of slavery. This is correct, but I'm also it's not legal. But I'm also saying that if we had direct democracy, Irish would still not be able to get jobs in certain places because they're <laughs> Irish. You know, real racism would sit like like institutionalized racism wouldn't just be something that people were like, this is institutional racism. No, it's not because of this. And we can have like an argument back and forth. No, it would be real institutionalized racism. It would be like, no, black people can't work here. That's what it would be like. It's just like democracy. literally like, yeah, no, no, no. All right. So, um. Uh, go to Planet Arbitrary. There, uh, go to Planet Politicast. <laughs> go to PlanetArbitrary.com for your Planet Arbitrary needs. You can follow me on Twitter at Planet Arbitrary. You can follow Steve on the Game Classy Facebook page. Backslash Game Classy Podcast. Yeah. Um, the best way you can help out the podcast is to like, comment, and subscribe on iTunes under Game Classy Podcast, all one word. While you're on iTunes, you can look up our other podcasts. Right now, the Planet Arbitrary pa podcast is no more. It's been it's been wiped clean, wrapped, wiped clean by the wrath of God. <laughs> um, so now, comic book logic has its own. I feed. believe that was also a card illustrated by Christopher Rush. What wrath, wrath of, of God? God. <laughs> so, uh, Planet uh, Comic Book Logic has its own feed right now, and that's me and Kevin. We talk about comic book movies. Um, Deadpool is going to be next Sunday, uh, so look forward to that one. So go see, I recommend it. Go see the movie so you don't get it spoiled for you because it's going to be a spoiler heavy podcast. Um, and uh, also. Um, Past Retro Video Game Review Podcast, a.k.a. Play On, will be getting its own feed as well. Uh, you could also listen to Gabe the Game Classy Podcast on the YouTube's page, where you could like, comment, subscribe as well. Uh, do I have anything else that I need to plug? Oh, yeah. We could also listen to our uh, – get in updates on our Reddit page, Game Classy, our Game Classy. So, uh, Steve, do we have anything else that we need to plug? MLG Pro! <laughs> Well, I wasn't. I, I, I was just looking for plugs. Oh, okay. So, uh, Steve, until next time, MLG Pro Game Classy. <laughs>